In this unit, we begin to discuss the Supreme Court's substantive due process jurisprudence. First, we'll look at how the concept of substantive due process has been applied in the area of economic liberties. Then we'll shift to substantive due process in individual privacy, including foundational cases relating to laws regulating access to contraception and abortion. The notion of substantive due process can be contentious. There are two due process clauses in the Constitution, one in the Fifth and one in the Fourteenth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The Fourteenth Amendment states that nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. As noted when we first discussed the post-Civil War amendments, the Fourteenth Amendment specifically refers to individual rights against the states because of case law that held the Bill of Rights applicable only against the federal government. Textually, the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment due process clauses on their face could be read only to provide procedural guarantees, not to confer substantive rights. Read this way, these clauses would guarantee that a person could not be deprived of life, liberty, or property without some basic procedural mechanism, such as a judicial hearing, but they would not specify what substantive rights to life, liberty, or property a person may or may not possess. In this view, the purpose of a constitution is basically structural and procedural, except where specific individual rights are enumerated in the document. The definition of substantive rights would be left to legislative enactments or to the development of the common law. Another view, prevalent in English jurisprudence before the American founding, suggested that written constitutions reaffirm pre-existing fundamental natural rights, that is, substantive rights to life, liberty, and property, even if those rights are not separately enumerated in the document. In this view, the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment Due Process Clauses are not merely procedural guarantees around rights the state or federal governments may or may not confer, but rather reflect the belief that individuals possess pre-existing substantive rights that cannot legitimately be eroded by any subsequent government action. These different views are illustrated by the diverging opinions of Justices Chase and Iredell in the 1798 case of Calder v. Bull, involving a dispute over a special legislative act that intervened in a will contest to deprive some heirs to an estate of property they otherwise would have taken. Justice Chase's opinion reflected the English natural law view of the Constitution. An act of the legislature, for I cannot call it a law contrary to the great first principles of the social compact, cannot be considered a rightful exercise of legislative authority. Justice Iredell's opinion reflected the structuralist view of the Constitution. If the legislature of the Union or the legislature of any member of the Union shall pass a law within the general scope of their constitutional power, the court cannot pronounce it to be void merely because it is, in their judgment, contrary to the principles of natural justice. Notice how these differing views relate to different perspectives on the role of the court in relation to the legislature. Justice Chase's natural law view suggests a much broader scope for judicial review on general principles, while Justice Iredell's view suggests narrower judicial review, confined mostly to basic structural and procedural matters. Although debates about so-called judicial activism are perhaps more intense today, they are not new.